Hey everyone, welcome to my very first weekly vlog. This is something that I've been thinking about doing for a while now. And you know, it's a great way for me to get my opinions out on things that I love and things I hope you guys love as well. So today I want to start off uh, by saying tomorrow is my birthday and I'm turning 30 years old. Yeah, you know, and I think I think when when we all reach a certain point, <laughs> we we feel as if we we should feel different. Uh, but honestly, I'm turning thirty, and I still, you know, inside I still feel like I guess a, a, a nerdy sixteen-year-old <laughs> kid. But um, you know, physically, I. In, in the past year or so, I've definitely noticed, you know, some white hairs here and there, which kind of freaked me out. Uh, the trouble is that, you know, some of my hair is, especially in the front, is kind of blonde. And so it's it's kind of hard to distinguish between that and the white hairs, but I'm pretty sure I've seen some. Uh, <sighs> yeah, it is it is kind of weird. But, you know, we I think everyone kind of goes through this denial about about aging and um, wanting to kind of capture your youth and to stay young and you know I, I just think you gotta you just have to accept the inevitability of, of growing old and that's really it I mean I'm, I'm, I'm 30 years <laughs> I'm turning 30 years old it's not like I'm I'm dying you know <laughs> but uh, but yeah it's it's it definitely makes you think about where your life is now and it's my life is certainly not where I want it to be and really definitely makes you think about changes that you want to make and so hopefully I'll, I'll be be able to do that uh, but yeah <laughs> it's it's just uh, but uh, today, um, I actually went out with my mom and did some shopping uh, with some birthday money. Got some really cool things, uh, which will show up in uh, my uh, Blu-ray update for th this month, as well as my recent game pickups. I got a lot of <laughs> game pickups this month, so uh, I'll show those. Um Another thing I, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, I, I I love, you know, watching, I love Netflix binging on television shows. Uh, and this week I started watching a show on the CW called The 100. Uh, this is a show that I tried to get into when it was like halfway through the first season and, and just couldn't do it. Um, I just like to start at the beginning. I'm, I'm not good at picking up like halfway through. Uh, so, you know, I started watching it this week and it was it was a mid-season uh, show. So it only had, I think, like 13 episodes, 13, 16, something like that. Uh, but it's it actually is really good. I, I really enjoyed it. There are definitely some, you know, stupid things in it. Uh you know, the, the, the premise of the show is that, you know, it's set, it's set uh, in the future, uh, 97 years after a nuclear war has wiped out uh, humanity. There are survivors, uh, there were survivors on these different space stations, and they uh, wound up uh, banding together and... Uh, I guess tying all the space stations together, creating the Ark, and you know for 97 years they have survived there, and so uh, they decide. And, and the the justice system there is, if you are under 18 years old, and you commit a crime, you get locked up. If you are over 18 years old and you commit a crime, you get thrown out in airlock. Um, <laughs> But, uh, th so they have a hundred of, of these kids that are under the age of 18 in, um, you know, locked up. And they decide to send them all down to the earth to see if it 
is uh, inhabitable. Uh, and and so that is the main premise of the show. And yeah, you know, since it's on the CW, there's a love triangle and stuff like that. But uh, it's it's a really it's it's actually a pretty cool show. Um, you know, kind of talking about you know what what humanity can learn from uh, you know nuclear war and uh, what people do to survive. And uh, it's it's a really cool show. I mean, because you have you have the juxtaposition of the adults on the Ark trying to survive, and then the kids on on Earth trying to survive. Um, and I, I've enjoyed it so far. So it's 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 definitely a, a fun show. Uh, and I I'm I finished season one. Really enjoyed it. I definitely want to pick up on season two. Unfortunately, it's not on Netflix yet, but uh, I'm gonna find a way to watch it. Uh, Next, I want to talk about uh, a video game that, that just came out this week, uh, The Witcher 3. I, I didn't buy it, uh, but, you know, th this is a game that wasn't really on my radar. I mean, I have the first two games on PC, but I, I haven't played them yet. Um, you know, I, I, I'm kind of fickle when it comes to my RPGs. I, I like more of the action RPGs, and I, I think that's that's more along the lines of what The Witcher is. Uh, but yeah, I just haven't got around to playing it. But the more and more I've seen of The Witcher 3, the more and more I want to get it. Uh, it. It looks like a, a fantastic game. The visuals uh, look look great. I really, really considered uh, getting it this week uh, for the Xbox One. But um, what I want to talk about is is just what you get for getting just the standard version of the game. Uh, you know, just for sixty dollars. You actually a nice you get a nice slip cover, plus you get a soundtrack for the game. You get a thank you from C D Project Red, who is a developer. You know, most companies don't really thank you for buying the game anymore. It's just kind of a, a nice little throw in thing to do, you know? Uh, and it also comes with a, a map. Uh, for the game, you know, it's just really nice that the developers, w when developers are, are just, I guess, know what gamers want, and usually that, that happens when they're gamers themselves, and they're very passionate about that, and they throw in this stuff because they know gamers will like it, and, you know, I love developers like that, because, you know, a lot of developers and and game publishers just care about the money now and that's that that's a big problem with gaming um and i i guess i can talk a little about konami right now because that's uh, that's definitely an example of uh, a problem with the gaming industry now konami recently announced that they're going mobile uh and i i guess they're still going to make console games here and there but you know the past couple months Konami has done some really weird things uh, there were issues with Konami and Hideo Kojima uh, and, and Hideo Kojima actually I guess got fired from the company and it's just we really don't know what happened with that and then Silent Hills the playable trailer for PS4 Apparently, everyone was saying was amazing, and the the hype around the game was was really big. Uh, and then Konami just announced it was canceled for w with no explanation. Uh, and and now they're they're saying that mobile is the future of gaming. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some really great mobile games, but. Without the lack of of decent controls, you know, mobile games are are not the future. <laughs> I mean, I understand that you can make a lot of money off them, especially with the free to play model, which they did mention that. Oh, God, you know, the free to play stuff. I I hate. I think most people do. It's 
And, you know, you've seen it kind of come into uh, console gaming, too, where, you know, I think with the new Mortal Kombat, you could buy easy fatalities and, you know, some games, if you didn't want to, you know, waste time, you know, actually playing the game, the reason that you bought it, you can just buy the stuff, you can buy the level up and things like that. It's it's ridiculous. Um, it's just just another way for the companies to get money. And, you know, I understand with these AAA games, you know, they, they cost more and more money each year to make. And a lot of times they don't meet sales projections, which, which are, you know, really off base a lot of times. Like, yeah, I remember when uh, they came out with the sales numbers for Tomb Raider, uh, which is a fantastic game. I highly recommend everybody to go out and play that game. Great game. But it's like Square Enix was saying, oh, well, it was kind of a failure. It didn't meet, the, you know, the sales expectations. Like, it still sold really well, considering. I mean, you just have, you know, ridiculous expectations for it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there are some definite huge problems with the gaming industry now. But, uh... But yeah, mobile, <laughs> it's just, uh, mo it's ridiculous w when I hear it. Mobile gaming is the future. You know, it, you know, console gaming, a lot of people are, are saying that it's going to, it's going to turn into kind of just stream boxes. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I don't see that happening now. I, I don't think internet is where it needs to be for that yet. Uh. But maybe, like, one or two more generations it might get there. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, I, I just don't want everything to go digital. I like I like having the physical copies of my games to sit on my shelf and look nice. And I can, like, oh, I like them, you know? <laughs> I can look at them and be like, yay, I've got them on my shelf. I don't play them, but i got them on my shelf. You know, I, I, I like that, the physical aspect of, of collecting them. But... But I don't know. I, I kind of went off on a tangent with that last topic. But um, but yeah, I I definitely do want to get The Witcher 3 someday. It, it does look fantastic. Um, I don't know if I, I... I guess I should play the first two games before I play that one. I really don't know uh, story-wise if uh, it's going to spoil anything if I just go ahead and play the third one. But... It really does look like a, a, a great game. Uh, well, I, that is all for my uh, first weekly vlog. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I'll do this again next week. I can I can probably come up with some topics to to talk about. Uh, as as always, uh, like the video, share it, and subscribe. Till next time.